We've got our list of accounts, which means now it's time to actually use one of those accounts to deploy the contract. To deploy the contract, we need to get access to the contract's bytecode that it has been produced by our compile.js file. So here's compile.js right here. Inside of it, you will recall that we use the Solidity compiler to compile our contract. And from this file, we are returning only the definition of our contract inbox. It was a couple of videos ago, but I want to remind you that this contract that we are exporting from this file has two properties assigned to it in particular. One is called interface and the other is bytecode. The property interface is the JavaScript ABI and bytecode is the actual raw compiled contract. We're now going to import both those properties from the compile.js file into our test file over here. And once we get access to that bytecode, we can then use it in conjunction with Web3 to create a new deployed instance of our contract. So underneath the last require statement up here, we're going to add in const interface and bytecode. Oops, not and. <laughs> interface and bytecode. And we're going to require that from the compile file. Remember that compile is up one directory, which is why we have the dot dot right here. And again, you'll recall from that previous video, we had a property on this exported object of interface and bytecode. So I'm not making these up. These are properties that we had seen in that previous video. Now that we have the definition of what a contract is, and we have an account to deploy it from, we can actually deploy the contract. Now there's a pretty good amount of code that goes into the deployment process. We're gonna write out the code right now, and then we'll talk about what every line of code does. So first, we're just gonna write it all out, and then we'll discuss it. So let's get started. We're gonna say new web3.f.contract. Now notice that contract right here has a capital C. It's a constructor function, so we are creating an instance of a contract. And then after that, we're gonna pass in json parse interface, like so. Underneath this, we're going to call dot deploy. So this is a method that we are chaining on to the object that is returned from contract right here. We're going to deploy, we're gonna pass in an object. This is gonna have two properties assigned to it. The first will be data. Data is going to be the actual bytecode that consists of our contract. And then the second argument will be some initial startup arguments for our contract. If we go back over to our contract, you'll recall that our contract's constructor function expects to be called with a string that initializes the message property. So whenever we create a new instance of our contract, we have to pass in some initial message to it. So we're gonna say arguments is gonna be an, ar an array. And for the initial message, I'm gonna use Hi there. The initial message right here can be anything you want it to be. Maybe best if you just use hi there right now because that'll make writing the tests easier for you and me later on. After calling deploy, we're going to add on another dot down here. We're going to say dot send. We're going to pass an object into this one. We're going to say from accounts at zero. This is specifying the account that we want to deploy, or excuse me, the contract that we want to deploy the account from. So this is essentially the person who is deploying the account. And we're just going to use the first accounts in that accounts array. And then we will also specify the gas that can be used to deploy the contract. Remember, anytime we modify the blockchain, we have to spend some amount of gas. So we're gonna say that this deployment can use up to 1 million gas. So that's gonna be one, zero, 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 like so. Now we're not gonna re we're not gonna leave the commas here. I put in the commas just so you can see that I am putting in specifically one million. So make sure you've got one million here, and then I'm gonna take those commas out. All right. Now the last thing I want to do is I think it'd be really nice if we could console log out whatever contract is created by this. So just like before, where we did some variable initialization, we're gonna do the same thing for a variable called inbox. So we'll say let inbox, and then we will assign the contract that gets created and deployed right here to the inbox variable. So I'll say inbox equals all this stuff. 
As you might guess, creating and deploying a contract is an asynchronous operation, so it takes some amount of time to complete. So we do have to add in the await keyword right here. So right before new, we're gonna say await. And then the very last step inside of our it statement down here, we're gonna replace the console log accounts with a console log, oops, a console log of inbox, like so. Ooh, a lot of code. So we're gonna discuss exactly what it all does in just a moment, but first let's test out our deployment. All right, I'll flip back over to my terminal and I'll run npm run test. You're gonna notice that it takes a little bit more time for our test to run now because we have to do that compile process. But hopefully after they run, we should see our deployed contract. Awesome, here it is right here. So this is the deployed contract. We're gonna go over all the properties that are in here, or at least some of them, in just a moment. But for now, let's take a quick pause and we'll come back and discuss the code we wrote and interpret that console log that we just saw at the terminal. So I'll see you in just a minute.